Good morning, greeting friends. Uh, this is the third week of Easter. I'm glad that you're joining us for our online worship service uh, this Sunday. Pray that uh, the Lord blesses you in your homes and as you gather uh, in his name with the promise that wherever two or three are gathered uh, and wherever people gather in spirit and in truth, there he is. We're going to begin this morning uh, with a reading from Psalm 116 to begin and frame our hearts uh, for worship this morning. So Psalm 116, uh, <clears throat> verses 1 through 4 and 12 through 19. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I was overcome by trouble and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, save me. How can I repay the Lord for all of his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and will call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all of his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O oh Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all of his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O oh Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. We begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening song this morning is uh, the song Across the Lands.
Let's join together now and come before the Lord in, uh, with honest hearts and uh, confess our sins and receive uh, these words of pardon that follow. Almighty and merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you. We have left undone the things which we ought have done. And we have done the things which we ought not have done. Have mercy on us, O God. Forgive us our sins. And grant that we may live in your light and walk in your ways for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I want you to hear these words uh, of assurance for all who trust in Jesus Christ from 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins. When we humble ourselves before God, he promises to hear and forgive us. This is the good news of the gospel. Rest in it and be at peace. Amen. Our next song uh, that we'll sing is a simple song uh, called Seek Ye First. from 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 13 to 25 Therefore prepare your minds for action be self-controlled set your hope fully on the grace to be given you when Jesus Christ uh, is revealed as obedient children do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Since you call on a father who judges each man's work impartially, live your lives as strangers here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with precious blood, the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but it was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him, and so your faith and your hope are in God. 
Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you may have sincere love for your brothers, love one another deeply from the heart, for you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. For all men are like grass and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord stands forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. This is the word of the Lord. We're going to profess our faith now uh, in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you now uh, to take time either privately or with the group of people that you are with right now to, uh, to pray. And I would just um, pray, if I was going to advise you, <laughs> to pray for two things. Continued... Um, discernment and guidance for our national leaders uh, and for our local leaders. I think even for uh, our governors and, uh, and local leaders here in Kalispell too, as we work out the kind of um, ins and outs and details of reopening our communities, that we would do so with um, guidance and wisdom from the scriptures and also uh, just a clear mind about how to best um, uh, best care for our neighbors as we uh, reopen our uh, reopen our community as well, and then also um, I advise you to just pray for the church too as they can we continue to proclaim the gospel in these various ways, and as the church begins to reopen that um, that we would have uh, both sensitivity and discernment about the message to be preached uh, to our congregations and to the wider community as well. So you can pray for those things and other things that are on your heart as well. Um, so take that time. I'll pause the video and then we can come back and we'll pray the Lord's Prayer together. We pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 24 through 29. Now Thomas, called Didymus, uh, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen 
and yet have believed. This is the word of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we've been at this uh, this whole online church thing for about, or in-home church thing, um, for about a month and a half now, uh, which doesn't seem like very long when I say it, but when I think back on it, it seems like it's been kind of an eternity, actually. Um, but it looks like in these coming weeks, our state um, and um, our uh, local town here is going to be opening up kind of more and more. And in the coming weeks, we will begin the process of returning uh, back to kind of more normal corporate uh, gatherings in church. Uh, and so I want to think about that a little bit today uh, and think about to kind of not to necessarily close out, but to, to uh, just just to think about some of the things that over these last seven weeks or so, um, I've been learning and been thinking about, um, and I wanted to share them with you and let them kind of frame um, our coming back into the world of corporate worship and gatherings in groups larger than one or two or five or whatever. Um, so I have four things that I want to just meditate on this morning to kind of frame and prepare us to come back into the life of the church uh, at large here. The first thing I want to think about is uh, and that I've been thinking about these past weeks, is how the body of Christ is deeply physical, okay? So the past few weeks, uh, as I have read through, uh, kind of over and over again, the Easter resurrection stories, I've been struck by how often those narratives in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John refer to Jesus' physical body. Um, Jesus isn't resurrected as some sort of spiritual being. Uh, he's not a vision. He's not some sort of wispy, angelic being. But he is, in each one of the gospel uh, messages, a concrete and real physical Man, God, dwelling among his people. Just think about the resurrection stories, for example. Mary, at the empty tomb, hears her name called by Jesus, and she cries out, Rabbi, and then clings to him uh, and holds him tight, holds on to the body of Christ, physically present, right in front of her. Peter, and the other disciples uh, uh, on the sea shore, on the sea uh, shore of the Sea of Galilee, um, eat fish that Jesus has prepared, a meal for them. Uh, he eats with them uh, and drinks with them on the shore together. A physical person, a physical man, and a physical body. <clears throat> on the road to Emmaus, Jesus walks uh, along the road with his disciples, feet on the dusty ground. He talks with his disciples. Uh, he eats a meal with them around a table in the evening. Uh, a physical human man, God. Thomas, in our reading for today, places his hands in the physical body of Christ, the nail-pierced hands and uh, the side which had been wounded by, uh, uh, of Christ, um, places his hands into the physical body of Christ. Just, I mean, in each of the Gospels, Jesus is deeply physical. And what that's reminded me of uh, these past weeks is that you can't divorce the spirit of Christ from his body. Uh, and his body, now here on earth, is the church. Paul teaches us in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verse 27. He says, now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you uh, is a member of it. In Ephesians 5, uh, 
uh, verse 30, he says, For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones, as the King James Version said. The church, as the living body of Christ, is meant to be physical, concrete, real, gathered together. Um, uh, so we have had this time over the last seven weeks where we're kind of gathering as the church in the spirit or at least in small groups in our homes. But we're coming to a day uh, where the physical body of the church is being brought back together. That is a necessary and good and holy thing for us to do. Ultimately, the church was never meant to be lived out online, uh, but was meant to be a physical and embodied thing uh, in the beautiful and messy reality of the church, embodied just as Christ was embodied when he rose from the dead. So coming soon, uh, ultimately, each one of us will need to get out of our pajamas. We'll need to finish the cup of coffee that we're eating. We're going to need to uh, take the lazy boy out of its reclined position, turn off uh, the TV or close the screen to the computer or shut off the smartphone and enter back into the messy and beautiful world of the physical church, the body of Christ. And uh, that may bring some trepidation, some worry, some concern. Uh, it may not be completely clear exactly how the church is to do that, but it is worth it for us to enter back in uh, in confidence that that is the Lord's will and desire for his church. I've been learning these last couple weeks also um, that uh, the Lord's Supper is an essential part of the life of the congregation and the life of the local body of Christ. So for the past seven weeks, uh, we have not taken the Lord's Supper as a congregation. It's been sort of a communal fast uh, from the Lord's Supper these past weeks. And I don't know about you, uh, but that's weighed heavy on my heart. I've deeply missed uh, gathering around the altar of our Lord as one body, listening to the congregation, singing uh, praise to Christ, receiving Christ's body and his blood, being assured of the forgiveness and union that we have with Christ and all of his saints uh, throughout time and place, and um, being given this small little foretaste of the feast to come uh, as the saints gather around the throne of God uh, in eternity. I mean, it's a little taste of heaven for me, and it's been a hard thing, and I would imagine it's been hard for you also to, uh, to not be able to uh, engage in that as the larger body of the church together. It's the center of our life and of our uh, worship and kind of the beating heart of our congregation. And I hope and pray uh, that this time has built in us a longing to receive Christ in, um, in the Eucharist. I've, I've been struck by Psalm uh, for, is it 42, I think, um, verse 1, where it says, As the deer pants for streams of living water, so my soul longs for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where can I go to meet with God? Jesus answered that question in the Lord's Supper, saying, you can find me here in this place. And I, uh, I just know that my own heart resonates with those words from the Psalms, and I hope that yours does too as we begin to enter back into the life of, uh, of the physical body of the church gathered together that we say along with the Psalms, my soul thirsts for the living God. Where can I go to meet with him? I've also been, uh, learned this uh, throughout these seven weeks uh, that I think it's, it's healthy for us to work out grief. Um, 
I think as Americans, maybe as Montanans in particular, we're not always good at kind of working out our grief and our disappointment. Um, it is easy for us to just think we should kind of stuff emotions, stuff disappointment, not bring it up, not bother anybody with it, not seem uh, weak or vulnerable by what we share or what we talk about uh, in regards to kind of the hard feelings that we, we feel. Um, but I've been inspired these last weeks listening to individuals who have had to come to grips with disappointment and grief that they have uh, felt. Um, from some of our college students, I've had the opportunity to talk with them and some high school students to get to talk with them over these last weeks uh, and just heard their kind of open vulnerability and disappointment saying, man, I had some really great things that I was hopeful for and looking forward to, and I'm just really disappointed and upset and kind of angry and struggling with uh, the disappointment of those things. Or hearing people say that they've really been uh, struggling or fighting against feelings of depression or loneliness in the midst of that. Um, or people saying that their jobs ended very abruptly and that has just caused a feeling of turmoil. I've had a lot of openness, people just coming to me and, uh, and, and being open and transparent about those things. And I've been inspired by the way um, that people have just been open about their grief and hardship. Uh, that's a good thing for us to do. And it's good for us to learn that we don't always have to have everything together, don't always have to be strong, don't always have to be confident, but that we can, as First Peter invites us to, cast all of our anxiety upon the Lord and in the church among, among the brothers and sisters in the church. Because why? Because he cares for us and we're called to care for one another. Even in the resurrection stories, I'm struck by this. You uh, read the story of the road to Emmaus and Jesus encounter these, encounters these two men who are just downcast and in grief. And Jesus enters right into that and says, why are you so downcast? And then as they walk along the road, these men uh, share the things that they're grieving over, the things that they're struggling with, the things that they are uncertain about. And Jesus walks and talks and works through all of that with them. That's part of the life of what the church does. So I've been learning that the body of Christ is physical, that the Lord's Supper is essential, that it's healthy for us to work out uh, grief. And then I think one of the biggest things that I've been, uh, I've been thinking and reminded of is something that I know and I know you know, but is a good, um, has had a good kind of awakening of, of this in me, is uh, that the mission of the church is outward, okay? So I, I've been really encouraged uh, by the boldness of the church in these past weeks in proclaiming, in proclaiming the message of Christ, whether it's um, pastors like myself making rinky-dink YouTube videos to try to communicate to his, their congregation and the people around, um, or whether it is Christians sharing about their hope and their confidence in Christ amidst uh, kind of crisis and anxiety, uh, people sharing things, people uh, calling folks, people thinking like, what does my community need and how can I help? Uh, in our own church, we've had like people who have taken groceries to folks, who have taken up to call individuals or visit people. We've had uh, ladies make literally thousands of masks for uh, business, businesses uh, and individuals throughout the valley. Um, we've had people sharing these sorts of messages or sharing uh, uh, scripture passages with their neighbors and those around, whether through social media or telephone calls or emails. That's a, that's a level of boldness in the church's proclamation that I don't think I really saw seven weeks ago. And my, my deep desire is that that same boldness exists when we gather back together. Because that is why Christ left us here with his Holy Spirit and with his presence on mission, okay? 
In these same kind of resurrection stories that we've been talking about the past few weeks, just consider some of the words that Jesus said to his own followers. He said, as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you out into the world to share uh, my good news and peace with the world. He has said that you and I and his disciples throughout the last 2,000 years will be his witnesses in Judea and in Samaria and to the very ends of the earth. We're kind of on the ends of the earth part of things, and we are sharing that news. Or in Jesus' final words to his disciples before his ascension, he said these words, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. The church's mission is always to be looking outward. Yeah, we, we care about, uh, uh, about the, the brothers and sisters around us. We are called to one another, but we are called to a mutual mission to share the gospel with those outside of, uh, of the church. And just as in these past seven weeks we've been bold in doing that, I pray that as we begin to, uh, the process of gathering back together, that that same boldness and clarity and fervor will continue as we, uh, uh, as we go out to the world to share the good news uh, with those around us. So those are some of the things that I've been, uh, I've been learning. The body of Christ is physical. The Lord's Supper is essential. It's healthy to work out grief and that the mission of the church is outward. Uh, I wonder what you might have been learning now these past weeks. It might be good uh, in the coming days to jot down some things, to write down some, uh, some of the things that as you've reflected and that as Christ has met you these past seven weeks, what you have been learning. And as things begin to kind of um, work back towards a level of normality, uh, what lessons you're going to take into that world. Uh, I pray that the Lord blesses you uh, and keeps you uh, in these coming days and look forward to seeing you here very soon. And the peace of the Lord be with you. For our closing song, uh, we're going to sing the song God of Grace and God of Glory. Uh, this is a so we sang it like one other time uh, during these whole online services. Um, and it is a song that has been kind of continually on my mind. Um, over these past six or seven weeks, just a lot of really great truth in, in this hymn. Uh, it's a hymn that's almost a prayer for the church in the society. And um, I am struck by all of the verses, but I'll just, I'll just remark on this first one, which says, God of grace and God of glory, on your people, the church, pour your power, crown your ancient church's story, and bring its bud to glorious flower. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this hour, for the facing of this hour. And that's been a prayer of mine to, for the Lord to grant his church wisdom and courage for the facing of this hour that we're in and all the other hours that we have um, in this life as the church. So we'll sing this song now together.
benediction of the Lord. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit abide and remain with us now and forevermore until the day of his return. Amen. I'll leave you uh, with these words from Psalm 122 verse 1. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you this week.